Hey guys, this is DoD, aka Dark Frozen Depths, back with some more of these Kamihime Project pre-event videos. Now, I know it's not much longer before the event, but if there's a maintenance anyways, it's still going to take us a while to play the game, but this is definitely an important video. You really need to spread word about this one, because it can make your life easier when you do. Because there is one big thing about this event where it can really screw you. But anyways, um, now granted, I'm not sure how good Barong is, because this is the one we're facing in this event. But she's light-based, so Darkness team will have the advantage, but this is definitely a case of use whatever you've got. You'll see why later. I don't know who um, Rhonda is. I, we'll get to all that later anyways. But what I do know for sure is the fact that all light events come with a light SSR weapon. And this is definitely a pretty strong one. I know a little bit of this at least. But from what I heard, it comes with a large assault. And 2,400 attack when you fully max it. So level 125 of this is definitely recommended. Anyways... This is a raid event, so that's what makes this even even trickier when you get to the actual mechanics of how to take on this fight. But anyways, as such, we have the typical raid stuff, basically. You have storyline, you got standard, which you need to do for the expert drops. You need to do expert to get both. And for some weird reason, it kind of refunds you expert items. It's weird, but it does that. But it also gives you items to get into Ragnarok. And in the case of Ragnarok, that's where we got a lot of stuff to worry about. But anyways, um, it's your same typical stuff. You're going to need to do both Expert and Ragnarok in order to get everything. Unless you're lucky enough and just pull it multiple times. And unfortunately, since this weapon's worth farming, if you do manage to get extra copies, you're probably going to want to go as hard as you can on this event. Ah, uh, okay, so this is what I'm looking at for Barong. Um, okay, so she is a little bit better than I thought just off the bat. I did hear her stats were low, but what she does is um, it's looking like it gives you light, light attack power instead of light characters getting it. So it's like a raw 40% increase of light damage, I guess. That's what light attack tend. That's what the elemental attacks tend to do, at least from what I can tell. But at the same time, too, there's um, darkness resistance as well. So, the previous um, ones we had, like Jack Frost and Amphis Vena, yeah, it's pretty much like them. But, you might want to get her because of the fact that the people that's using St. Nicholas have already, have already had this issue of where, hey, guess what? You summon her and everybody gets a defense buff. Including your enemies. You have a reason to drop St. Nicholas now. You might want to get her. But this light gun. It is very, very good. It comes with a burst effect. Too. Where your soul gets more light attack. I believe. Or the whole group. I don't know. But since you got to pull burst to use it. It's basically if anything survives it helps. But you get an assault boost off of it, a large assault, meaning skill level 20 is 16% more attack power. I could definitely use more weapons like that. I mean a light team. And like I said, 2,400 attack. If you have grids that don't fully have anything done, this will give you a nice boost. And then this one, I don't know what Rhonda does, but like I said, we'll get to more info on her later. They don't have it right here. Now, here's the interesting thing. It looks like, um, it looks like Barong's the one you fight in all three of these, but I'm not sure. She definitely gets dangerous around Ragnarok. But, um, they don't have too much info on the standard. And I'm not too sure what happens on the expert, but you got the same problem there, I do believe. 
Like, that's, this is the one time I'm finding the wiki doesn't have too much info, so... Again, it might play out like the um, Ragnarok fight, only a little bit easier. But I don't know. I'll be doing um, an expert video anyway, and I usually can solo those, but I'm not too, too sure about this one. I got three Darkness SSR, so I probably got a good chance of it. But anyways, the Ragnarok fight. This is where it gets very, very, very tricky. First and foremost, she's got the ability to just randomly attack twice. So, that's always a problem. This is where you need to lower her attack power, because I'm I'm hearing from people that's actually played this on DMM, which, who got this event long before we did, like over a year ago. I'm hearing that does a lot of damage. So, if you just try to take it head on, you're going to lose HP fast. If you try to take this overall attack from her normal charge move, like her normal burst, you're going to have a problem. Because it does damage, and it causes a debuff where you won't be able to regenerate turns from your ability. So if you've used them, they're on cooldown for much longer. If you really want to be honest, I would save all your ability use for the raging point anyways, unless it's something like healing. Or ha trying to tank an attack. But, here's the biggest problem. When she uses her burst, like her special attack, while raging, what happens is the fact that she, from what I see, she gives herself a buff where she'll reduce the chances of getting debuffed. After clearing all the debuffs that's on her. So, your debuffs aren't going to stick. But the reason why you want to save everything for this point anyways is because of the simple fact that, hey, guess what? Her debuffs boost the damage that she deals. It seems to be just one character, but this can easily take you out. From what I'm hearing, just two debuffs on her is enough to cause this to hit you for 5,000. Even if you got, like, a few resistances or... Or something to block it a little bit, I do believe. I'm not fully sure on the details, all I know is this. If you're using Mordred, you have a Death Wish. Because this will start killing off your team pretty quickly. So, for the love of God, if you have Mordred, do not use Outrage. You don't need all the stuff sticking like Darkness, Dizzy, Burning. I'm not, I mean, um, I think it's Burn. But um, Poison, all those sticking. Mordred is a debuff cocktail, and that is very bad in this fight. If you're going to use debuffs, use your simplest stuff, which is attack downs and defense downs. As long as you hit the 50% cap, you don't need to do anything else. But that's the point where you have to burst out everything you've got. In this case, ra Raging Drain seems to be the best result, but you may or may not be able to do it in time. In that case, you want to up your defenses. So, teams that can take out that Raging Meter quick, or teams that have very strong defenses and healing should probably be best used. In my case, I have a few options, but they both pretty much trace back to Light, Dark, or Wind. Because my Gaia is a level 80 Awaken. All you need is a level 75 Awaken Gaia to pretty much use this tactic, but... Gaia can redirect attacks to herself, as long as they're not, like, hitting multiple groups. From what I can tell, if you get hit, if it targets people randomly, it'll just direct towards Gaia under this. But at 75, she invalidates all the damage she takes from it. I think up to three three attacks is used by the the enemy. Either that or it's up for three turns. I don't remember how it is, but all I know is this: she'll save you from this nuke once. Like she'll tank it head on and not even take any damage. But she also comes with the um the damage cut ability, which is the same case as Joan. And both of them will reduce the damage you take by 40%. That's very helpful. Not to mention, she comes with a regen, just like Joan. And the regen will heal up to 1,200 HP, so that's not too bad for a regen. If you want a flat heal, you gotta go somewhere else. But, um, Gaia is a very good one to use for this fight. So, win team users can definitely use her. Gaia plus Joan should keep you alive for quite a while, especially if you have a wind healer, which is... I think rare, but they're still there. 
I know um, there's an SR one that heals everybody, I do believe. But um, it's Stockwell. I think that's who it is. But in the case of a white team, you know how my white team has Soul, Raphael, Tsukiyomi. Characters like that can really help you out too because... There's a lot of attack downs that can stick. Except for I gotta get Mordred out of there and I gotta bring in somebody else. And hopefully you have Sniper Shot land. But, that's the whole thing with that. You could use, um... Attack downs are definitely gonna be your friend. For as long as they're in. But once they get removed, then you're gonna have problems. But, um... You could have attack downs through the light team. They have a lot of healers. Raphael, if you have her, definitely helps in this fight because she can sip and hit and then remove one of the charges, giving you a, a slight breather. This is the one case where one of Mordred's debuffs can actually help you until you get nuked, but it extends the turns that it takes for the, um, the, the burst to charge. So that plus Raphael can give you four turns right there. Maybe more if you got other characters that can do it as well. Because I do believe I, um, I've got the water version of Raphael as well, which can also help because water's got a lot of healers. But at the same time, there's um, Jack Frost where if she luckily actually does it, she can remove a charge as well. So you might want to put her in her summon pool. But this is a case where you might want some of the defensive stuff too. So like Hecaton chairs. If you can remove it off of her, Jack Frost, I mean, um, St. Nicholas will do it. Yeah, Jack Frost too, I mean, I mean, because she's, um, comes in with the, with the, uh, the charge removal. Um, there is somebody else that also does it too, I forgot who. It was a darkness call me, he may I believe. But, um, and that's the other thing I can go to, the darkness team. A lot of them have self-healers, so... Considering that single target, if you can withstand it, you can start having them self-heal a little bit. But the thing with me is the fact that I have a Mon who's good at good at raging and nuke and stun extension. Susano O who just nukes pretty hard whenever you use that one ability. I have Nephilus or Neftis, I, I forget how to pronounce it. But she can hit pretty hard between her self-attack boost and she got a critical boost which sometimes doubles the damage of her hits from what I can tell. That hits pretty hard, too. And then she also does more damage in the stun state, too, with one of her buffs. That team plus Siegfried can probably take out the Raging Meter, too. So, I've got options. I'm just spitting the ideas here because that's a very dangerous raid. There is no shame in trying to trying to have other people either take the hits or, or mooch off of this raid. Because you will need some help from somebody else in some way, shape, or form. Unless you're, like, stupidly strong, dealing, like, five five times as much damage as a normal person. Now, I'm talking, like, the average the average player is where I'm pretty much at, minus the amount of SSR. So, you're probably dealing, like, maybe, I'd say, 15,000 to 30,000 per hit once all the buffs, buffs and debuffs are kicked in. Overpowered players are probably dealing 50,000 without any debuffs or buffs. So, yeah. They're probably dealing anywhere between 30,000 and 50,000 without, without any help whatsoever. Those are the type of players that might be able to solo this. But either way, do what you can. Because this, this raid has some very valuable prizes, but a lot of effort to go get them. And then I still don't know what the SR um, Kamihime does. But yes, they have it clear as day, completely trans. when I have this translated... But try to debuff as little as possible. Even this says it right here. You will get one shot at if you do something like that. I do believe if you put Mordred in there, and even with the damage cut, you're going to be taking so much damage that you better have 10,000 HP or more. I think you'll still get killed pretty hard off of that. It's like complete overkill when you have uh, all those debuffs on her, so please... If you're using Mordred, don't use Outrage. Yeah, it has an attack and a defense down, but it also has all those other debuffs. It is literally a debuff cocktail sticking like eight of them on her. You don't need that. Then combined with the other two abilities, you could pretty much put ten on her. I even had a, um, 
an ability from Esmond on um on Mordred one time, and that lowers the um the chance of doing double and triple. So at most you could probably get twelve debuffs with Mordred. But that's just proving my point further. Just avoid using her or use her correctly if you're going to do it. But the normal gotcha stuff applies for the most part. And then hopefully you can pull her or the weapon, saving you some trouble. But for the most part, I do believe if you want everything to get her. And they made it easier too, by the looks of it. You don't need to go as hard to get everything by the looks of it. It looks like you only need 50 expert and 55 um, Ragnarok kills. However, there's some very strong pieces in here. From what I'm seeing, you get 200 and also get 200 on expert and 90, 90 of the um, soul drops for um, Ragnarok. You'll end up getting two pieces of um, Dragonic Eyes. So, there's some very valuable stuff that you can go all the way through. But thankfully, thankfully, you only need 50 of each. Me, with how much stuff I got, I could probably do that one day. If I sit there just spamming raids all day. So, it depends. It really depends. All I know is this. You get... You can get all your copies of the gun... You can get all your copies of Barong in pretty much 105 raids at the most. So that's the whole thing with that. But there's tons of other prizes you might want to go after too. I know the Magic Jewel's got a lot more weight now. The Magic Jewel seem like they have a lot more weight now because we're starting to... Like for players that's been in here, you've probably been far into the game. Heck, myself, I've used Magic Jewels in order to extend my inventory. Not to mention there's accessories. I haven't extended the inventory on those yet, I don't believe. But I hold 150 weapon slots and 140 add-on slots. Not to mention with the normal gacha feeding a lot better stuff, you're probably going to gacha a lot more, meaning your, your inventory is going to start getting filled up rather quick. You might want a lot of spaces in order to, to make the most of it. And then some people try to sell back some of that stuff for a refund. I tend to use it to enhance because it's still more experience points each time I do each batch. So, by the time I run through all my pools for the day, I've pretty much spent like a good, I'd say roughly, roughly about maybe 10,000 experience points to both weapons and I don't just from the normal stuff. So, that's the whole thing with that. Somewhere between 5,000 to 10,000, depends on what drops. But anyways, that's my whole point. You might want to farm magic jewels from this as well. Especially considering the fact that the gotcha itself can throw them at you. So, that's the whole thing with that. It throws them in batches of five, but it still throws them at you. So, diligent enough players can make a lot of magic jewels off of this. But if you're going just for the SSR stuff, you don't have much work to do. Because you only have 55 Ragnarok. As in 55 Devil Souls and 50 Divine Souls. That's it. But for people that want to actually try to get everything, you have 250 Divine Souls, 100 Devil Souls, and 3 million points. So. But that's pretty much it. And then. There's a few other um, decent weapons here too. If you need to fill holes in your grid. Which happen to be, um, like, from what I can tell, you might need to hit the gotcha in order to get a copy of, um, to fully finish off the SRs. But they're still somewhat useful here, too. Because every last thing I'm seeing goes by assault. But that's just from this description here. I don't think it's, um... Yeah, see, this is HP, so that's where it says it right here. That's not, that's not worth it. But the um, there's a white assault spear in here, and it's actually kind of strong. The uh, maximum attack power it has on it is like 1700. But if you still gotta fill holes in your in your stuff, then yeah, here you go. But this is what I was talking about right here. This, is, and it's a gun too, which allows you to um, 
Like, if you haven't pulled souls, then you, this is your only means to get, um, somebody like Artanian and, um, Granuel into your white team. Because I don't remember another white gun. Not unless you've, um, got it from the raid, but this is how you get their SSR power. But this, this alone is worth it. Oh, and I see what they mean by they said their stats suck. They don't really suck. It's more they put more towards HP to over the attack power. Because attack power is more higher value than this game. But quite frankly, you still need HP too. No shame in having her as your lead. Of course, it could lower the overall power of my grid. But at the same time, I'm using um, I'm using Hecaton Chire. So that's still more stats than what Hecaton's got. So... That's the whole thing with this. It's it's a very dangerous fight on Ragnarok. It might be the same case for Expert, I think. But you've got to watch your debuffing. That you're going to end up leeching off of, off of a few raids or even having somebody else take the damage. Because the thing with that is... And I don't know if it fully... um Like, the raids seem active. So, if I'm correct, if somebody gets hit with that nuke, it will clear all the debuffs, allowing you to get hit with the nuke and take less damage. That's that's what I'm get, getting at. You might have to take turns sponging damage, so that's how it is. But this definitely either this definitely promotes either co-op work on this, or you just need to be stupidly strong and play smart at the same time. And besides, if you're soloing this, the catastrophe fights for the for the raids shouldn't be a problem for you. I don't think guild order is going to be a problem for you, but that's the whole thing with that. But anyways, that's enough for this video. Again, I'm going to do runs of this because we're definitely going to need to see what, what an expert does at least. But I intend on doing a Ragnarok fight as well. But believe me when I say this, I might actually die. Because... In a game like this, it's kind of detrimental when you lose one character, so you gotta make sure you have some decent backup. But the whole thing with that is the fact that if you you lose one character, it pretty much throws your whole team out of whack. So, I've got some backup for it. I'm gonna have, um, somewhere in the mix, I'm gonna have Joan or, or Siegfried, whichever one tends to work better. Then I'm gonna have SSR Amon. I'm going to have Susanna O, I'm going to have Nephitus, and I'm going to have Bastet on the front lines. My subs are going to be, um, Narohotep, or, I call her Naruko because it's easier, plus I remember that from the anime I've seen before, and then, um, and then I'm going to have, I do believe she was, um, Beelzebub, yeah, even though Beelzebub's double attack is not needed, that's suicide as well because you're just taking more damage. So, I would avoid using that skill, too. But anyways, that's all I got for this, guys. And, again, for the love of God, do not use Mordred. Or you're going to make things worse for everyone. But, that's all for this video, guys. Take care.